Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about Hapla Diploidy in Honeybees and I recommend you to stop video here, read the problem, questions, try to solve each question on your oven first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanation. So as I said, uh, today I'm going to talk about Hapla Diploidy and I would need uh, this picture in order to explain uh, what's going on with honeybees and uh, for example the same rules would apply to uh, cockroaches and uh, some other um, insects uh, where we can find uh, haplodiploidy. What does it mean? Uh, that means that uh, uh, worker that is female and queen would be deployed and drone that is male would be haploid and in our problem we have uh, a statement that uh, the deployed chromosome number of the honeybee is 16 so uh, as long as we know that uh, deployed um, would be uh, female so we would know that worker would have 16 uh, chromosomes and a queen also would have 16 chromosomes because a queen is deployed and female and drone uh, is um, haploid so uh, the chromosome number would be half or would be 8 and uh, so we answered our first question that is how many chromosomes will be found in the somatic cells of the drone or male and the answer would be eight chromosomes and question b how many bivalents will be seen during the process of gametogenesis in in the male and uh, first of all what is the uh, uh, bivalence and imagine that here for the uh, female worker we would have 16 chromosomes but this is going to be eight pairs of chromosomes so eight chromosomes would be from the father side and eight chromosomes would be from the mother side so these chromosomes would be homologous so uh, the same picture we would see here and we would have eight chromosomes from the father side and eight chromosomes from the mother side but uh, male would have only uh, half the number of chromosomes so uh, male would have um, only one set and the number would be eight so when we for example talk about uh, female that is going through the process of meiosis and if we take a look at one pair of chromosomes so let me circle one pair of chromosomes for example this would be chromosomes pair number one so if we take a closer look what's going on during meiosis one we would find that each chromosome here would uh, make a copy of itself so we would have a picture like this and this is going to be uh, uh, chromosome number one and this is also going to be chromosome number one but one from the father side another from the mother side and this is going to be homologous chromosomes we call this uh, chromosomes those as you see we have here uh, four chromosomes but at this stage we call them chromatids and this is going to be uh, two sister chromatids and this two also going to be two sister chromatids and if we consider this uh, chromatid and this chromatid we call them non-sister uh, chromatids 
and during meiosis 1 these two uh, chromosomes because because these two chromosomes are homologous would form synaptomental complex so that would join them together and uh, this cementomental complex consists of three types of proteins two collateral proteins and one central plus um, this would be joined uh, with the help of uh, RNA and uh, as you see two non-sister chromatids would be able to exchange uh, their arms and we call this process uh, crossing over and thus diversity would be increased so uh, as you see we would have uh, uh, per one female uh, in the process of the meiosis uh, eight such um, complexes we also call them tetrads this is just another name and during meiosis we would see that uh, each uh, chromosome would make a copy of itself and this is what we would see and as I said we call this tetrads and as you understand such a picture we only can see in uh, females because uh, male wouldn't be able to form tetrads and uh, wouldn't have uh, meiosis uh, it can produce sperm but it's would this process would be more like uh, mitosis so uh, one cell here uh, would duplicate number of chromosomes and then uh, would divide to two cells so one haploid cell would produce two haploid cells and one diploid cell here would produce four haploid cells here so uh, gametes here would be haploid and uh, one cell here would produce four haploid gametes here but here uh, one haploid cell would produce two haploid cells so this is the difference so if the question how many uh, bivalents uh, will be seen during the process of gametogenesis in male we should answer that uh, this is going to be zero there is uh, not going to be any um, bivalence or this is not going to be any uh, tetrads here so the answer zero and question c how many bivalents will be seen during the process of gametogenesis in female and we already answered this question uh, we have one two three four five six seven and eight uh, tetrads here or bivalents and this is going to be our answer so our answer here would be eight and one more comment probably i should uh, say this is at the beginning you may wonder how it is possible that uh, some uh, bees develop as uh, diploid females and others uh, develop as haploid males and this depends whether a queen uh, had a sex or not if uh, the queen have a sex with a drone then uh, her eggs would be fertilized and fertilized eggs would be deployed and a uh, worker would develop and if uh, the queen wouldn't have a sex uh, her um, egg cells wouldn't be fertilized and from such uh, eggs drones would develop and this is uh, how system uh, of the haplodiploidy works in honeybees. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. 
and see you in the next video. Goodbye.